from Putin's point of view is that once the referendums have taken place and come out with the expected result, those territories will be part of Russia. So any Ukrainian attack on them, supported by the West, is an attack on Russia itself. Mm. I, I mean, I think Putin has a, a problem. I think the situation in Moscow seems to me to be rather fragile. I mean, none of us actually know what's going on there. Putin himself probably doesn't quite know what's going on. But the he has now uh, he's now opposed both the traditional liberal opposition, which has been ratcheted up by the rather spectacular um, attack on the war by Ala Pugacheva, who is the top star and has been for decades in Russia. Everybody knows her, and she's come out against the war a few days ago. Mm. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, he's exposed to quite a lot of pressure from really quite uh, extreme right-wing nationalists who think he's been feeble in his prosecution of the war so far. So he's uh, he's having to navigate between the two in circumstances when it's perfectly clear that his original invasion of uh, Ukraine was a gamble that was hugely bungled and everybody's now having to live with the consequences. Mm -hmm. So I think he's he's trying to get back on top of the domestic situation. And of course, he's also sending us messages. And as far as the nuclear threat's concerned, I mean, I agree with Tony. I think that this is um, rather, uh, it, it's the usual, it's what people say when they're trying to convince you that they mean that they've got a nuclear deterrent, which they would use in extremists. Mm. Uh, you can never be sure that people won't do something really silly, but Putin knows as well as uh, our people know that the use of nuclear weapons by either side could lead to uh, an escalation and a disaster that that nobody would want. So mm. I think that is a slightly over oh that is overblown that threat. Um, it doesn't mean to say that uh, if if things got out of hand and if his domestic situation got out of hand, he might not do something silly. But there are quite a lot of safeguards in place in the Russian system to ensure that nobody does anything silly. The theoretical difference from Putin's point of view is that once the referendums have taken place and come out with the expected result, those territories will be part of Russia. So any Ukrainian attack on them, supported by the West, is an attack on Russia itself. Mm. I, I mean, that's a pretty theoretical proposition. And... I, just to add to what Tony said about what ordinary people in Russia think, I mean, I, I believe that ordinary people in Russia know very well what's going on. They have all sorts of access to a variety of sources of information. And even in uh, the Soviet Union, even in Stalin's time, news circulated because there was a tremendous rumor factory. I mean, people during the war in Afghanistan, which was also supposed to be a a, 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 a minor special military operation, People knew what was going on because the body bags started coming home and you got a resistance building up about amongst ordinary people and particularly the mothers of the soldiers. Mm. And it was a very effective uh, operation. And those mothers or their 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 daughters are, are still operating. So I think that uh, I think Putin is 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 worried that he's assailed by uh, people by from both sides. And Tony's quite right. What is happening now is that the is that he's being attacked by extreme nationalists and he is unable to slap them down. I mean, if if a liberal protest, they get, they get put in jail for five or ten years. He hadn't done that with any of the right wing mm. people. They mm. made vague threats. So I think he's I think he's in a fix. I think all sorts of things might happen in Moscow. <laughs>